Hey, this is Steve Halleck at TikToking.com. I have a new review for you guys today. Uh, definitely subscribe to my channel, check out the website, and uh, here we go. So today I have a Richard Meal RM10. Uh, you may have seen the RM2 that I've done earlier on this channel. Um, so this is the kind of entry level Richard Meal. Uh, still expensive, obviously. Um, but I wanted to show you some of the features of this watch and why I think it's it's still pretty cool. Um, also, I want to show you this new strap. I just got one of these. They're really rare, uh, super tough to find right now, and uh, it adds a lot to the watch, I think. So this particular one is in titanium. Now, the uh, the first sort of time-only Richard Meal was the RM5, and this uses the same movement as the RM5. Um, but the uh, in uh, the mid 2000s, I guess they changed over to the RM10, which has a little bit bigger case, um, and I think it suits the piece uh, more. Because one of the other really cool things is you get more um, transparency because there's more space. So I, I think you can kind of see here, but you can see through all the way there and there and here, all the way around where the date wheel is. Um, you can see through the whole watch. So there's a lot more of that with the 10 than there is with the 5, and I think there may have been little uh, changes to the movement uh, to allow that as well. Um, but again, this particular one's in titanium. I think titanium really suits uh, Richard Meals quite well. I just put this on the scale, and with this super lightweight Kevlar strap, the whole watch is 60 grams. So it's uh, super light, and it really sticks to their racing machine on the wrist uh, ethos. Um, so the watch is pretty simple. It's time only with a sweep seconds hand and a um, date. And you can see the date wheel goes around here. So the whole watch is transparent um, and pretty cool. Cool skeletonization. It's not sort of uh, super high-end finishing or um, you know, I don't know that the horological value of this watch is incredibly high, especially for the price. If you're really just interested in like a great uh, piece of watchmaking craft uh, at this price, you can certainly do better. Um, but this is really designed to be a sports watch and to showcase new materials. And it's also a design piece as much as anything else. Um, and if you saw my RM2 video, you know that I absolutely love the Richard Meal case. Uh, I think it is uh, one of the most important watch designs in the last, uh, you know, several decades. Kind of similar to uh, the Royal Oak coming out in 1972. It's, it's just a, a totally unique case. And it, to me, it's like the most comfortable watch to actually wear on the wrist. And it gives this sense of depth uh, and um, proportion of a big watch without really wearing like a big watch and it's still super comfortable. Um, but you can see also here uh, the different levels to the dial. That's one of the coolest things on these Richard Mille pieces is the uh, the markers for the hours are actually on a uh, plate that's raised from the dial. So you have this sort of sapphire here and then you have the hour markers and then you have the movement and the hands themselves. So you get a, a lot of depth with this watch and a lot of three dimensionality. Um, so uh, this, unlike the RM2, which has the push button selector, this one just has a normal crown. You pull it out once for the date and twice um, for the time. Another thing that they touted with the beginning of the RM5 um, was this variable inertia rotor. Um, and the idea was that uh, you can you can sort of change the weighting of the rotor depending on if you're more active or less active. Um, but it's kind of stupid because in order to do that, you actually have to take the watch apart. There's no uh, setting from the outside. So you basically would have to like decide that you are either so active or so inactive that it warrants changing and then uh, send it to Richard Meal to change. Not a very useful feature. Um, and almost every RM5 or 10 I've ever seen uh, has the 
uh, rotor actually set in the middle position, so I don't think anybody really uses it. Um, but it's still kind of cool. Um, let's see, what else is interesting here? Oh, the strap changing is kind of cool on these. So these, these screws hold the case together, these two side ones, but these two hold in the strap. Uh, the two on this side and two on that side. So there's a special tool to change the Richard Mille straps and you take these out and then the strap just pulls out and the new one pulls in and you screw it in. It's pretty cool and it minimizes scratching of the case as long as you're careful. Um, so let me talk about this strap. Uh, I bought a Richard Mille RM2 in I think 2002, which was super early on the brand and their straps were total crap. The watch was great. Um, but the straps were made really poorly and they would uh, separate uh, at the at this end so uh, you know they'd almost fall off the wrist and uh, they were just really bad build quality and Richard Mille has done a, a great job in making better straps um, so this watch originally came on uh, their rubber strap which you may have seen is sort of shaped to go into the case and it's vented and it's a, it's a really really cool rubber strap um, but I think this new Kevlar strap is even cooler. It started with the Rafael Nadal model, and they've just made these for the RM10 and some other pieces, uh, although they're super hard to find still. But it's Kevlar, it's lined in, uh, I guess this is leather, um, but it, it feels very waterproof. Um, so I'm not sure, it may be some sort of other uh, material that's a very kind of waterproofy material. Um, and then for the Kevlar strap, it has its own buckle built in. So you don't reuse the normal de uh, deployment buckle that was on it. You just keep that with the strap. And then this one um, has this cool Velcro enclosure. So it really makes the watch super sporty. It keeps it very, very light. And uh, I think it fits with the watch really well. And it makes it very unique for a cool watch. Um, in this world. So let me put it on my wrist and you can check it out. So here it is on the wrist. You can see these cases just fit so well. It just really hugs the wrist and um, it's got, you know, a really cool look. And for the money, you know, you can argue that it's too expensive, that it's more than it should be uh, on horological value. But I think if you look at it as like a really cool sports watch and a design piece um, and a kind of way to get access to the coolest brand in the world possibly, then uh, it becomes a much more interesting proposition. And when you think about a watch that you want to wear every day, uh, I don't know that there's anything better than this one. I mean, the, the, the great thing about the high-end Richard Meals is that they're, they're very high-end and they're so comfortable and they're, they're great to wear every day, but not everybody wants to wear, you know, a hundred or two hundred or five hundred thousand dollars on their wrist um, for everything that they do. So for a sports watch, um, this thing is pretty cool. So there it is. That's the Richard Meal RM10 uh, in titanium on their new Kevlar Velcro strap. And I hope you enjoyed it.